I'll see you later, Joe. Hello, welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Today I want to walk you through a great floor plan. It's a 28RB. Uh, the decor and the model we're going to be in is the Flying Cloud series. The exterior width is 8 foot 5 and a half inches and the interior width is 8 foot 1. Exterior height with air conditioning is 9 foot 9 inches and the interior height is 6 foot 7 and a half inches. The hitch weight is 899 pounds and the gross vehicle weight rating is 7600 pounds. Today we're going to do the RBQ, which will be the rear bedroom queen. This model was previously called a 28W, and this floor plan was developed in 2004, and it's still around today in 2018. It's a very open floor plan. When we walk in, you've got a lounge to your right, which folds out to a 44 inch wide by 97 inch long bed. You can actually sleep two adults here or two children. Then you have a dinette that folds down 76 inches long by 42 inches wide. You could sleep two kids here. One of my favorite features about this trailer is when you're sitting on the sofa or when you're in the galley area, you could see out and you could see your kids playing out at the campground. You could see your picnic table, your campfire, all the stuff that's on your side of the travel trail. Don't forget, this is the front of the trailer and this is the side that is for you at your campsite. And then this side would be your neighbor. So some of the other floor plans that Airstream offers do have a lot of windows on your neighbor's side, but maybe not a lot on your camping side. So this floor plan is one of my favorites for that reason alone, uh, having the windows on your side. And these windows, just pull the handles here, twist and lift, and they open all the way out. And there's three different height adjustments that you could uh, utilize. So you get plenty of ventilation. And you know when you're prepping food, kids are playing outside, you have a line of sight of them as well as you could speak with uh, through the window here and uh, talk with them. <clears throat> Floor plan has uh, plenty of aisle space down the middle, a uh, good amount of counter space. Refrigerator is located in a very convenient area. There's a hidden wardrobe in the hallway. There's a privacy curtain that pulls across, clips right in. And then the privacy curtain is going to be utilized for this split bath. So showers on one side of the hallway, toilets on the other side, and there's privacy curtains on either side to block this area for privacy. But if someone's using the toilet, you have full access of the trailer and no one's getting blocked in. The back. Uh, this is the RBQ, Rear Bedroom Queen, so you have a 60 by 75 inch uh, mattress. This is a pillow top memory foam mattress and the bed platform lifts up to gain access underneath for bulk storage. And you can actually reach into your trunk. Uh, this is a very high quality premium mattress that Airstream offers, so there's no need to go out and upgrade and get brand, brand new mattress. This is plywood with laminate with pocket hole screws, very stable construction. They oversized the wood here for a very stable structure. This flips down for additional storage, comes with the bins. The bins can slide out of the side here as well. But in the twin bed model, uh, the beds are a little bit longer, they're 80 inches uh, long, and they're one on either side. So you gain a couple little storage compartments in the exterior when you go with the twin bed versus the queen. Queen has one big one in the back, the twin will have three total. And then the twin won't have these wardrobes here, it'll have a half height shirt locker, and uh, we'll have a rear panoramic window. So this is a quite a little bit different, but that's called the RBT, rear bedroom twin. It used to be called a 28 a. Um, this uh, floor plan in the bathroom here, there's a, a great amount of room between the toilet and the wall here. It gives you enough room to maneuver around in here without having to leave the bathroom door open. And this box here that you see, that's the wheel well. That's where the wheels will cut in the body, just like they would on a pickup truck. So we're going to go to the front of the trailer. I want to show you a little bit more details on uh, some of the systems inside. Right at the entry door, we have a heavy-duty grab handle uh, for exiting and entering. A ceiling light switch. These are all LED lights in the ceiling. You can turn them on and off. Uh, that would be your main ceiling lights, but you could also dim them down. 
Next to that, there's an awning switch, and that would be for your awning lights. There's an LED light strip, the entire length of the awning that you could turn on to illuminate the underside of the awning. You could dim that down if it gets a little bit too bright as well. And then you have your step and your porch lights right here. So that's all grouped in this section. Battery disconnect, this will allow you to electronically disconnect the batteries to shut the batteries down for long-term storage. Very important to for maintenance and to charge the batteries while you're towing down the highway or when you're plugged into electricity. Just make sure that battery switch is on. Also, nothing will work in the trailer if the battery switch is off. So if you hit the battery switch off, I wouldn't be able to turn on the lights. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Long-term storage, shut it down. When you want to use the trailer or charge the trailer, turn it on. This area right here is a perfect size if you want to uh, purchase Zip D folding chairs. Same manufacturer makes the window awnings, uh, makes uh, folding chairs, and they'll actually fit in this compartment here. There's an inverter switch. We have a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter on board that will take your stored battery juice and invert it into electricity. So you could run a laptop computer, television, Blu-ray player, those types of things. And then there's a switch in the galley to turn it on and off. The switch will vary depending on what floor plan uh, you, you are to purchase. So the location might vary. Um, the interior decor we're in, uh, we're in the Flying Cloud, which comes in three different decors. You have Wild Honey, Sandpiper, and Truffle. Sandpiper is the lightest color available. Uh, that's what we're in right now. It's a dwell material by Ultra Fabrics. So it has some grip and texture to it. The Ultra Leather used in the Signature and Serenity series is a smooth finish. So the reason why a lot of families like this particular material of the Ultra Fabrics is because it's grippy. So their kids, when they're sitting on the sofa, they're not sliding out. Um, a lot of people think it's a cloth by looking at it, but it's the uh, same Ultra uh, Fabrics manufacturer that makes the Ultra Leather and the Signature and Serenity. They do this design as well. Wild Honey will be a little bit darker color. You can see the accent and the pillow here. Uh, it would be more of a gold color. And then the truffle is a chocolate brown. The only variance is the countertops. When you get the truffle interior decor with the dark chocolate brown cushions, they'll give you a lighter color countertop. When you get the Wild Honey or Sandpiper, you get a dark countertop. The MSRP on this trailer as equipped is $95,934. That includes a $1,334 destination charge, which is equal for every dealer in the United States. They pay the same dollar amount for destination. And the options included on this trailer are the convection microwave upgrade. So standard comes with a three burner cooktop, with a gas oven below. A lot of people, and it was a very popular option, they opt to get rid of the gas oven, they'll keep the three burner cooktop, and they'll put a convection microwave in, which is a electric convection oven, a very efficient uh, device inside this trailer for appliances. Uh, that's a $475 option, I do highly recommend that. The window awning package. Well, standard you get one zip to awning with some umbrella material, but now you have an option. You could get a window awning. We'll see that when we go outside later. That goes down the whole entire road side of the trailer. Your awning is on your curb side. Your window awning is on your road side. And then there's also one for the rear window. That option package costs $1,350. I highly recommend that because if you decided to do it after market, it's going to cost you about $1,000 more than that. There's labor, there's shipping, and uh, the, the material charge is a little bit higher than Airstream buying them in bulk. bulk. This has the wireless backup driving camera. So there's a wireless monitor that goes in your vehicle, plugs into a 12 volt socket. And on the back of the trailer, there's a little camera. It gives you a wide angle lens. You can see about three car lanes behind you and you can see the lane next to you on the left and right. So you can leave it on the whole entire time you're driving. It's powered by your parking lights on your vehicle. So when you plug the camera in, you turn the camera on, just turn your parking lights on, that powers the camera. And uh, I would leave it on the whole entire time you're driving. Uh, that option 675. This also has the solar charging system. Solar charging system gives you two 80 watt slimline uh, solar panels and you get upgraded batteries or absorbed glass mat. This trailer would have group 24 series, 12 volt batteries in parallel. And uh, the batteries are a better battery technology. They're gonna last you a lot longer. And the solar charging system will give you enough charge to keep your batteries topped off when it's in storage. And if you're in, in a boondock situation, it'll allow you to run a little bit longer. The battery system on the trailer will run everything inside this trailer, except for anything that runs on propane, which you could do um, when you're not plugged in. 
and it will not run your air conditioning or microwave. So keep that in mind. You could have heat, you could have running water, you could have hot water, you could have fans, lights, radio, all of a battery and propane. But if you want to use your air conditioning or microwave, the trail will have to be plugged into either a portable generator or uh, campground electricity. That's it for options on this trail. That one is uh, $2,200. And again, that costs less to do as a factory option than aftermarket. And if you do as a factory option, it's covered by Airstream's nationwide warranty versus a dealer warranty if they did installed it themselves. Uh, there's one more option available in this trailer that this one does not have. That would be a second air conditioner. Standard, you get a 15,000 BTU air conditioner, ducted air conditioning with electric heat pump in, on board. That is sufficient to cool this whole entire trailer on a very hot day. Um, there is an option to get a second air conditioner and that would go on this trailer in the bedroom, all the way in the back of the trailer. And it'll replace your 14 by 14 Fantastic Fan. Airstream will have to delete the generator port up in the front of the trailer. It upgrades the electrical system to 50 amp service, which is a heavier gauge power cord. And uh, that option is about $1,600. And uh, I would say a small percentage of our customers take that option, but if they feel that it's important to them, it is available. Uh, it is something that you do not want to try to add after market. It, it should be done at the factory. Um, the floor in this trailer is a vinyl flooring. So the plywood, 5 8 inch tongue and groove plywood is uh, put down uh, first on the, on the shell. The shell then is dropped onto the chassis. There's an anti-wicking substance painted to the whole perimeter of the plywood floor uh, before they put this vinyl floor down. And then all the furniture that's inside this trailer is carried through this door and placed down on top of the floor and uh, positioned in place. So that means if you ever had to take uh, part the trailer, everything that is in here will come back out through this door. And there's no cord around molding that is holding down the floor here. The furniture holds down the floor. The anti-wicking substance is a great uh, feature for Airstreams because if you left your door open on a rainy day and the floor got wet and water then rolled underneath the vinyl flooring into the plywood, it wouldn't wick it through the whole entire floor and soak the floor. It would actually repel and uh, drip out the bottom of the travel trailer. Underneath the lounge here, we have some storage. It's a plywood door with laminate. You have poplar supports here for, as part of the brace and the structure of the sofa. It comes with the little plastic containers, which is nice. You could take them out of the trailer, load up your clothes in the house, put it back in the trailer, and you have a nice, neat uh, storage for that. The lounge is relatively easy to set up. This just slides straight out, and you could take the little decor pillows, put them away. Take this here snap it in place. If you have a little backrest, you can remove, it gains another couple inches. And you can sleep two adults here. And this is premium foam that Airstream uses inside these cushions. Look at the way how it's all stitched together. You know, they do a, a great job putting all this together. And you know, there's all different grades of foam that you could use and way to put it together. Airstream does use really, really good stuff. And the little plastic lining in here um, prevents the cushion from sliding around, but it also is part of the installations. In order to get this big block of foam into this cover, they hook up a vacuum to this uh, or bag system. It shrinks the cushion, they put it inside, they let it go, and it expands out perfectly. So it's, it's very functional to have inside here. Behind the sofa, there's a storage area where you could put large items. So these little pillows here fit right in that little compartment there. And there's an armrest, so you could put some of your devices on here. These are blackout line curtains, so it's a three-piece curtain. This is the way that Airstream designed it to open, so there's uh, four pieces all together. But when you pull them around on the aluminum uh, slide system, you can see how much privacy you get inside the trailer. And at night, you know, they can't see, really see the shadows inside as well. Directional reading light, there's an LED light over this uh, lounge that you could turn on and off from here has an AM FM CD Clarion M303 stereo system on board. You could also sync your cell phone to this and, and stream Bluetooth. You could answer telephone calls on the remote control. 
a little microphone up here. A lot of people are curious about what this microphone is for. It's strictly part of the stereo system. Airstream installs it because it comes with. We have a Blu-ray player that plays uh, DVDs as well. There's a USB input on the front here. We have a USB charge port on the side. There's a double here. And then we have a USB input for the stereo. So we have one for the stereo, one for the Blu-ray player, charge ports here. And then all, this Blu-ray player will run off your inverter system as well when you're not plugged into electricity. Comes with four remotes. That seems like a lot, but we got a remote for this, this, and uh, standard TV in the galley and the standard TV in the bedroom. So there's four remotes total. The stereo has a detachable face case. So if you want to take the face off and put it away and put it in your pocket and, and not leave it in the trailer, you could. And there's tools in here to remove the stereo completely. Wireless uh, backup driving camera we spoke about earlier. This is uh, half of it. This is the part that goes in your tow vehicle. Uh, the camera itself is already pre-installed on the trailer. And it's also less money to do that as a factory option than to try to do it aftermarket. These overhead roof lockers is plywood with laminate. These hinges are adjustable. You can take a screwdriver and tighten it so it closes a little bit tighter and opens a little bit uh, quicker. Uh, I like the way they're set up right now, so there should be no need to make any adjustments there. There's a GFCI protected electrical outlet here, so if you're sitting in this corner and you want to plug in electricity, you could do so. This one does not run off the inverter, so keep that in mind. You'll have to be plugged into electricity. There's a small storage compartment here. Now, a lot of people, they said, well, why would Airstream put a door here? It's, it's not really that big. Believe it or not, I've seen people put a lot of creative things in here, and they utilize this space very wisely. It costs money to put doors and compartments on, but Airstream doesn't want to waste any space at all. So, you know, anywhere they can possibly put storage, they do. Next to that, we have your propane leak detector. That's a gas leak detector. Gas is heavier than air, so the gas will hover towards the floor. That will go off if you have a gas leak. It's very sensitive, so if you spray any aerosols by it, it's probably gonna set it off. Underneath the cushion here, if you lift up, you can see there's a couple access panels. One is your subwoofer and your inverter system. So if it ever needed service, you could get right in. You can see they cut it right out with the CNC machine. It's finished on both sides. They didn't skimp anything there. And then there's access to your water heater bypass for winterization. So the hole is already cut here. You can reach your hand down through and follow the bypass procedure in your owner's manual. So uh, technicians love working on Airstreams because in a lot of RVs, the service access points are not accessible. You either have to take apart furniture or move all the customer's personal items out of the trailer just to get to these areas. Well, right here, you just lift up the cushion, reach your hand down, you're done. So Airstream makes it very easy. In the galley area, we have your solar display. So this has the optional solar system we spoke about. This will show you how much battery percentage remaining. Battery voltage, solar voltage, sol solar charge amps, solar amp hours, and the charging status will light when you are getting solar gain. Below that is your inverter switch. So you press this little button. You hear a little fan kick on underneath the sofa here on this model. And now we're creating electricity for those other outlets. Uh, now keep in mind that those outlets are powered on the 2018 models, even when the inverter is not on. So, you know, if you're plugged into electricity and it says inverter circuit, you can still plug into it, it will still work. But when you're not plugged into electricity and you want outlets to work, the ones that are labeled inverter circuit are plugged into that inverter. And just make sure you don't go over 1000 watts. So no toasters or hair dryers. And when you're done, make sure you shut it down because that will drain your batteries down pretty rapidly even when it's not in use, uh, if that button's left on. Your tank monitoring system, we have the C-Level 2 system. You can see how much battery voltage you have, how much fresh water level and percentage we have. We have a 39 gallon fresh water tank in this trailer. You can see how much gray waste you have, as well as uh, black waste. You could turn on your water pump from here. It's a demand pump. So what it'll do is siphon water out of your fresh water tank, pressurize the system, 
and then shut off. Once it feels a drop in pressure, the pump will kick back on and you'll see a green light lit up to let you know that the pump's on. Never run the pump when the system's dry because the pump will continuously run and burn itself out. We have another uh, window, this is an 18 inch window. So operates the same way as the window over the dyno we did earlier. Just pull the handles, twist and lift. And again, three different height adjustments. And there's an insect screen on every single window that opens. Even the front window over the sofa opens, but you do have to open a rock guard from behind. Ocean air roller shades, pull it down, hook it in. If you want a little bit of light and some privacy, you can hook it under the handles. And then all the way up, opens. Just make sure you roll them up square. If you pull them over to the side, you'll fray the edges. This view window here in the galley area, Smoke detector with a 9 volt battery. Make sure you change that every six months. This is part of the ducted air conditioning system, the quiet stream system. Allows you to change the direction of the airflow and you can actually shut off certain vents. So if it's a little chilly in this corner and you're sitting there, you can shut off this vent and the rest of the air will blow out of the other uh, registers. These are your intakes for your air conditioning. Make sure you uh, check these filters periodically. You'd, you'd be surprised how, much, how fast lint will clog these up. Uh, most common uh, people come into the dealership, their air conditioning's not working, it's not running right. We pull the filters down, they're completely clogged. So make sure that they're clean because you, you could damage your air conditioning in the long run. Fantastic fan in the galley, standard. Fantastic fan in the bedroom, standard. We spoke about when you get to second air conditioning, they will delete that fantastic fan. But this one you'll always have. There's a motorized lid that allows you to lift the fan lid up. There's a variable speed control here and a thermostat control. And you can manually open the fan lid if you wanted to. And then when the lid's open, you can have the fan shut off as this event. It will shut down when it rains. Uh, or you could have when the lid opens, the fan come on and then change your speed. And then once you set your temperature, if it gets higher than the temperature you have set, uh, the fan blade will uh, come on. And then once it gets lower than your temperature set, the fan blade will shut off. There's a fuse here. If something got stuck in the blade, it will, it will pop the fuse first. And then there's a quick release screen so you clean the blades and the screen uh, periodically. Very thick gauge steel queen stainless steel sink here. This is uh, residential quality. It has a cover. I recommend putting this away when you're towing. So here, this is a good spot right there, right underneath the cushion. Just gotta remember it's there, otherwise you're gonna think you lost it. Moen residential faucet is a metal faucet instead of the plastic faucets most RVs use. And the difference with an Airstream is it's a true travel trailer. People buy an Airstream to spend a lot of time in it and travel a lot of miles. So most trailers are built to a light duty specification, you know, made for quick weekend getaway a few weeks a year. So they can get away with a plastic faucet and particle board and vinyl sticker wrap for the cabinets and, th and thinner uh, gauge uh, floors. Well, Airstreams are built in a more robust manner for people that want to enter this as a lifestyle. They want to do it more. They want to spend a lot more nights in the trailer, put a lot more miles in the trailer. You're going to need premium uh, fixtures like this in order to do that. This has a separate sprayer off to the side too. There's a ocean air roller shade behind the galley sink. There's a task light LED over the sink. Look how wide this door is and how much it opens. You have some drawers behind here. It comes with a silverware organizer. These are some of the details you find only in Airstreams. And all the hardware is premium detachable hardware. So you can unclip the door if you just want it to be open, or you could take the cap off and make adjustments to the door to re-square it over time as things expand and contract and settle. This is the optional convection microwave. So there's an electric grill, an electric element on the bottom, on the top of the microwave here, and there's a fan to kick on that circulates that air around your food. So it's just like an oven you'd have in your house, but in a smaller compartment, and uh, you just set your temperature and your time, and there's a little uh, 
book that comes with this to give you some recommendations, but it's 1.2 cubic foot. So if you take the measurements of the inside of this and compare it to the gas oven, this is just slightly smaller. The oven looks so huge, but when you, once you open the door, you'll see it's about the same size as what you get inside the convection microwave. Stainless steel cooktop cover, heavy duty grates here. Uh, the front is your high output, so you just select which burner you want on, hit the spark button, see a nice solid flame there. This is a great way to bleed out the propane system, so you just switched up bottles or turn the propane uh, tanks on and uh, you want to get the air out of the system, well your furnace is probably going to misfire five or six times, your water heater will misfire, your refrigerator will misfire because that air is still in the system. Turn on your cooktop, get all that air out of the system. So that's a good tip. And this spark will spark each and every burner and it will only ignite the one you have turned on. There's cooktop ventilation, there's a louver on the outside of the trailer with a little latch you do have to open in order to get that airflow through. And then this has LED lights for your cooktop. Spice rack here off to the side. Plenty of storage in your overhead roof lockers. And then the wheel well and furnace is behind here. So there is a bit of storage with an access panel for service if you need to. But instead of just putting a solid panel here, they do give it storage. And the cutouts here are for the return for the furnace. Dinette, when you want to fold it into the bed, you're just gonna lift the table up, let it pop out of its cleats, bring the leg in, make sure the cushions are tucked really tightly back or you can lift them up to get them out of the way and then swing the table down. It goes in between, two backrests come off and they're just velcroed in so they don't come out when you're driving and then they're going to fit pretty snug when it's new. And then it's a good amount of space for an adult and you could sleep someone right next to you. It'll be a little cozy, but it will do the job. So bring it back up, tuck your cushions back in nice and tight. And then lift the table up. Make sure you hook it in the wall. And then don't drop it because you'll bend those brackets. Make sure you drop the leg in place. And it's very stable. On the International Signature and International Serenity models, it's pretty much the same floor plan with the same feature level, but you'll notice a difference in the floor plan. The furniture will be more like a curved piece of plywood with an open bottom, and there'll be two Vista View windows here instead of their overhead roof lockers. And the dinette table will be a little bit longer, wider here, because it lays on top of the benches. On this model, it sits between the benches on these brackets here. So there's a little bit of the design difference. But if you lift up these cushions, you gain access to the whole underside of the storage. So you get in this way, or you can lift up the cushion and lift up the lid here and uh, put a lot of large bulk items in. So say you wanna put bottled water in the trailer, well, you, could, you have plenty of room for three different cases in here. Underneath the dinette, there's a cable outlet. So if you wanted to put another TV in, you could plug it into the cable. And then there's a black button with a green light. That's an antenna booster. And that will boost signal up. There's an omnidirectional antenna on the roof that goes over to air digital high def reception. But in order for that antenna to communicate with the television, you first have to turn the TV menu from cable to air and then turn on that antenna booster and that will boost the signal up. Be careful with that though. If you leave the booster on, it will drain your battery down over time if it's not plugged in. And if you leave the booster on, when you hook into cable at a campground, it's going to distort your signal. So just remember to have that shut off when you're not using it. There's a GFCI protected electrical outlet underneath the dinette as well. There's more storage on this side, but it goes right up to your wheel well. So the wheel well cuts in half of it. Yeah. LED task lighting over the dinette. Standard television. And this is plugged into an inverter circuit as well, so it'll run off your battery system. There's a skylight in the bath and a skylight in the galley. This one's a little bit thinner and the one in the galley is a little bit wider. The wardrobe. The width of the door is not as wide as once you get inside. 
There's an access panel uh, for your shower faucet if you ever need to replace it. There's a light inside of here, and there's a wardrobe rod with little notches built into it that prevents your hangers from sliding back and forth when you're towing. There's an access panel to get to the water pump for winterization below. And a lot of people get confused with this because the hinge is on the right side, but it opens from the right side. The hinge is part of the privacy curtain, and then this piece is your handle to open it. So a lot of people are puzzled when we go to RV shows on how this all works. They try to pull it from this side. Down below we have a furnace duct. There was one by the entry door as well. This is the battery converter charger. This converts AC to DC, charges the battery. This is a multi-stage converter. The bottom portion is the battery charger with the fan that will kick on periodically. You have all the breakers for your electrical outlets and your electrical components. And you have 12 volt fuses for your 12 volt items. Water pump, radio, lights, fans. And then if one of those was to malfunction and the fuse was to blow, there's a uh, a l indicator light that will let you know that there's a problem or a challenge in there. Seven cubic foot automatic two-way refrigerator. These pieces here that are clipped into the door are airing cards that you could uh, put on and it clips the door and keeps the door partially open when you're in storage. You don't want to leave the door shut after you get back from a camping trip and you shut the fridge off because it will, when you come back it will be completely moldy. So it's very important to use these. The shelves are adjustable and removable. There's a big notch here cut out so if you have a taller item you want to put in it will clear the shelf. They're made in the United States which I love. Airstreams are all handcrafted in the United States. Airstreams build in about 4,000 trailers. They're all handcrafted. There's about 350 man hours in each trailer. The Globe Trotter and the Classic take a little bit longer than that, but proudly made in the United States. Jackson Center, Ohio. Refrigerator to turn it on and off. There's an on off button here on the top, and that is covered by the door when the door's shut. To turn it on before you go on your trip. If the trailer is plugged in, it will cool in five to six hours. If it's not plugged in, you'll run it off of propane. It might take a little bit longer, about seven or eight hours, to get it down to a comfortable, safe temperature for your food. Once uh, you're getting ready to leave, well, unplug the trailer, shut the propane off, shut the fridge off. And you could drive for many, many hours before the temperature in this refrigerator will get to uh, unsafe uh, temperature for your food. This is a very efficient absorption refrigerator. It removes heat very efficiently, so it will stay cold for a very, very long time. It automatically runs on electricity and will automatically switch to gas when you don't have electricity. So it says auto gas here. There'll be a little dot next to auto to let us know we're on automatic mode. And there's no dot next to LP because we're plugged into electricity. So it is running on electricity. If I went outside and unplugged the trailer, you would see uh, a dot under auto and a dot under LP to let you know that it switched over to LP, which is liquid propane. If it misfired, if you didn't have propane on or you had air in the system, it would flash the letters LP here to alert you to let you know that it did not ignite. And you can manually run it on gas. So say if you had a generator and you had just enough power to run your air conditioning, but you didn't have enough power amps or four amps to extra to run your refrigerator, you could manually switch it to gas and then you'll see a dot next to LP. And then your temperature setting, you know, maximum that would be a very, very hot day, uh, about a 90 to 100 degrees to get the temperature down to normal level. On a cooler day like today, we're about 50 degrees, I only needed a one or two to get it down to the proper temperature. And there's an airing card in the top part too. Above the refrigerator, there's some storage here. Again, it's not super deep, but it's there because Airstream is trying to provide with the most amount of storage possible. The shower has its own LED light. It's a glass door with a metal frame. Inside the shower, the pink stuff you see is just RV antifreeze that dripped out when we winterized it. But it's a two-piece fiberglass enclosure with an overlap at the seam, which will pre prevent you from having to keep it caulked. You don't have to wear a water rolling behind. I do recommend either squeezing the shower door down when you're done or just put a towel in the hallway so when you swing the door open any water that runs off the door doesn't run underneath your furniture. 
The shower wand hangs up on the wall. It is detachable. You could set your temperature from the diverter and you could pause it once you get your desired temperature, lather up, turn it back on, and uh, it'll help you save some water. And it's very important, there's a drain plug to put in the uh, trap here. When you're traveling down the highway, the water could siphon out of that uh, P-trap underneath the shower or it could dissipate out of it and then you might get some tank odor. Now when you have a brand new trailer there shouldn't be too much tank odor in your gray tank but as the years go by you, you might uh, pull over and have a weird smell in your trailer. Well if the drain plug's not in that's probably what it is. There's a clothesline in here that pulls across, hooks in and then you can lock it in place just by tightening the screw. And this is for light items. I wouldn't put heavy towels on here, and I wouldn't tow around with things on here, but your bathing suit you can hang from there. Very light items you can hang. And then there's a shower fan. You can push up on it, push the red button, and that will exhaust the steam out of the shower. And then there's a magnetic strip that keeps the door shut. And there's a uh, safety lock when you're towing so it doesn't pop open. Bedroom, we spoke earlier about the, the mattress itself, the dimensions, but some of the other items I wanted to show you is there's side wardrobes here with a wardrobe rod on either side that you could put a lot more shirts and you can put bulk items here in the bottom. There's some cubbies built in. Top one has USB charge ports on each side for both uh, family members. And there's an electrical outlet so you could plug in CPAP machines or anything else, that alarm clock that might have electricity. Directional reading lights over the bed. The back window opens all the way out, but it's also emergency exit, so that's why the handles are red. So you open it just like the side windows, but the last piece of uh, that you have to pull out is this release for the screen. So it's a sacrificial release for the screen, unravels the screen so you can climb out. And keep in mind, if you do get the dealer installed optional bike rack, uh, if you have your bikes on the bike rack, then you could potentially restrict the window from opening. So you might want to unload the bikes when you get to the campground if they do interfere. Overhead roof locker over the bed. There was two speakers and a subwoofer in the galley as part of the stereo system. There's two speakers here in the bedroom, all part of that same sound system. When you turn on your television, you could actually turn on the stereo and sync it so you could get uh, the sound from your television to broadcast throughout the trailer. That would be for the galley TV. Or you could just have it separate and have the TV on its own speaker that's built in and then have the stereo running in the background. And you could fade the stereo front and back just like you can a car. So if you just want stereo noise in the bedroom, you could fade it on the stereo. Picture window here in the bedroom. And then you get a stacked window, which the top one opens here as well. You can see now we're inside the trailer, the window awning from the outside, it really shades the whole entire side of the trailer. It helps keep the trailer a lot cooler and they look fantastic. I love the way they look. TV's plugged into an inverter circuit here, uh, HDMI and cable. So this one's hooked into the front Blu-ray player. And then there's a release to release the TV so you can swing it out. And you could change the angles while you're laying in bed if you want to watch TV. There's a furnace duct here on the floor, so every area of the trailer is heated, including your tanks. The tanks are below the underbelly on this trailer. They're dropped into an insulated chamber, which is metal wrapped. It's got uh, styrofoam insulation in there. And when you have your furnace on, the furnace runs on propane and battery, that will uh, give you forced hot air not only in the room of the trailer, but down into your tank chamber. So it circulates hot air around your tanks to give you a little bit higher threshold protection for cold weather camping. By no means is this a four season trailer, but there are people that do camp and when it's really cold out here in the Northeast. And as long as you have temperatures uh, above uh, freezing during the day and it might get below freezing at night for a short period of time, you should be okay. But if you get temperatures below freezing night and day, you might want to rethink keeping water on board. And there are things you could do to your campsite to allow the trailer to have a higher threshold protection. And um, I've seen some folks uh, take it even further. And we lifted the bed up earlier, and I showed you uh, some of the details on it. Uh, but I, I wanted to lift it again so I could show you that you can really reach into the trunk. 
when it's pouring rain out, if you left something in the trunk, you could get to it from inside. So that's a nice feature, well thought out by Airstream. Another side here, we have the electrical outlet USB we spoke about earlier, same wardrobe, same windows. Electrical outlet here down by the floor, ceiling light switch with dimmer. And then we have the comfort control center. This will allow you to control your air conditioning, heat pump, furnace, and the fan blower in the air conditioning. You can see what your inside temperature is. 60 degrees inside. You could raise your set temperature. Right now I have the heat pump on, on uh, 68 degrees. Uh, I could turn the temperature up or down. The fan is on automatic. There's a low, medium, and high, but if you have an automatic, it will pick which speed it needs to be on in order to run and to get you to your desired temperature. And then once it gets to your desired temperature, if it's in an automatic mode, the fan system will shut down and the, and the heat pump or air conditioning, and it'll kick back on when it's necessary. The heat pump's designed to work when it's about 40 degrees or higher outside. If the ambient temperature's colder than that, you should be running your furnace. And the furnace is not only heating the room, but it's heating your tanks. Heat pump is just heating the room. You could toggle through the mode and change it from uh, heat pump, air conditioning, automatic mode, and furnace. Temperature settings here on the side. You could change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You could set the clock and you could even set a program. And then you can manually override it to take the fan from an automatic mode to a manual mode, which will allow you to run 24-7 on low, medium, or high. So if you like that white noise all night long, and you don't want to hear the heat pump kick on, you could override the fan. And then to shut the whole entire system down, there's an off switch here. And it's taking the temperature reading right here. If it was a dual AC unit, you'd see a temperature sensor in the galley, so it'd have two different zones. Carbon monoxide detector in the bedroom. Again, nine volt battery. Make sure you change that every six months. And there's a fantastic fan we spoke about in the galley earlier, but it's right over the bed. So this is where the second air conditioning would be if you got that as an option. In the bathroom, well before I do that, this is the other privacy curtain I didn't pull out yet. And I do get some comments on the skylights. It seems very flimsy. The outside skin is a very thick skin. This is just a thermal break so you don't get any heat transfer. So that's all that is on the inside. <clears throat> thick gauge stainless steel sink, another high quality residential faucet. Fixed mirror here. This mirror lifts up and allows you to put items in the medicine cabinet. There's a little shelf here. Plenty of counter space. Seal light switch, and it's, see how bright it is? Well, if that's too bright for you in the morning, you could shut half of it down or part of it down and have it a little bit dimmer. There's another bathroom fan here for exhausting stale air. Air conditioning heat, heat pump vent. Water heater controls, you could control the water heater on gas or electric, so electric or gas. And when you flick the electric element on, just make sure you have water in the water heater. When you flick the gas element on, if the red light kicks back on after about 30 seconds, that means the water heater misfired. You're out of propane, uh, you have an air bubble in the system, so that will be a warning light. So a lot of people think the water heater is not working when the red light's not on. The red light should only be on if there's a problem. It's a six gallon tank, but it has a mixer valve. It gives you nine gallons continuous flow of hot water. So turn the water to the hottest setting, turn it on. Once you have the system up and running, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes to heat you up to a super te hot temperature, about 130 degrees. You can turn this faucet on, run about nine gallons through before you run out of hot water. So it's very efficient. There's storage here below the counter. Toilet paper holder is accessible right in front of the toilet instead of behind it. This is a porcelain toilet bowl by Dometic. Put your foot halfway in the pedal to allow the bowl to fill up to your desired height. So you decide how much water you want to use. A cup, two cups, a gallon, whatever uh, you decide to use, it's your choice. And then all the way down for a flush. And it's recommended to drain the toilet bowl down before you start towing. Otherwise, you're going to have water all over the walls and the floor of the trailer. Spin around underneath the sink. There's additional storage here. And then there's a furnace duct as well and a towel bar right behind the toilet. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed what I went over the inside. Let's take a break. We'll go outside and I want to show you some more details. You gotta love this door on the Airstreams. It takes about eight hours for one person to build this door. All the pieces here on the screen door are all TIG welded. It's aluminum. You got screen door guards, heavy duty deadbolt lock, entry door handles, heavy duty. When you swing the door around here, it clips in. This piece fills the gap. It's aluminum grab handle. This is all extruded aluminum structure, all TIG welded here at the bottom. There's grip tape so when you're on your way out you don't slip out the door. It's on an angle so any water that gets here will run right out. Stainless steel hinges for the screen door. Thick heavy gasket for the entry door. There's a 45 degree angle plate here that allows you to sweep the trailer out very easily. And that sound, the bank vault shut of an Airstream travel trailer. Love it. Riveted entry door window, extruded aluminum gutter rail over the entry door that prevents sheathing rain from coming down the side of the entry door. Heavy duty cast aluminum hinges for the entry door. And the step, this is Airstream's patented step. You lift it up. So you only have one step, and put it away. To bring it out, you can do two hands, or you can kick it. LED step light here off to the side. The extruded aluminum belt line protection for where the two seams overlap here. Beautiful Alcoa coated aluminum. Extruded aluminum rub rail protection where the body meets the underbelly. The whole entire underbelly of this trailer is wrapped up in aluminum. There's flex foil insulation before below the uh, subfloor of the travel trailer. Outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. There's a catch here for the entry door so when you swing it around it will latch right in. Beautiful tinted safety glass windows. And again, we spoke about it earlier, but this would be your camping side. So it's nice to have a view from the inside of the trailer right out to where your kids will be playing. These is our load range E Goodyear Endurance tires. Uh, they're uh, to be inflated to 80 PSI. It's recommended to check your tire pressure before every time you travel. Check your lug nut torque as well. And then follow a procedure here on the side of the trailer after 10, 25, and 50 miles if you ever are to remove the tire. These are 225-75-15s. It's on a uh, Dexter axle. There's a door torque axle with never loop hubs and never adjust brakes. So the hubs do not need any maintenance. They have a 10 year warranty. There's a shock on each wheel. And the, the rubber torsion axle system really keeps these tires down on the road. Uh, will prevent the trailer from swaying. There's less moving parts. Give you a much lower center of gravity. All the tires will have a DOT date. Tires are replaced six years from the date of production. And when you figure you buy a new car or a new RV, the tires, by the time they're manufactured, shipped, distributed to the manufacturer, to the dealer, it's about a year old already. So you figure five years if you buy a brand new trailer from um, the date of purchase, you should be replacing your tires. These are uh, stainless steel valve stems too, very important. Uh, the, the piece that comes out extends is uh, stainless steel. There's stabilizer jacks all four corners of the travel trailer. So they're meant to take the bounce out of your walk. So when you're walking around the trailer, it might move a little bit. You could put your stabilizer jacks down and then you could, you could increase the surface. These are heavy duty jacks, so they, they do have a big bottom, but you could put a block of wood or leveling blocks underneath the jacks to give you more ground surface. LED. Running lights on the travel trailer. You got reflectors from the back on the low point. The back tail lights are also reflective, but uh, they're for your brakes and uh, turn signals. Beautiful work here on these cast aluminum tail lights. Uh, I love each each one of them. I appreciate all the, the hard work Airstream puts into their travel trailers. Polished rear bumper with uh, protective end caps. Rear bumper storage. 
diamond plated with holes drilled into it so water could drain out. So you could put blocks of wood, wheel chocks, anything that's going to be on the ground at the campground that's going to get dirty. Instead of putting it in your trunk, put it back here if it fits. License plate bracket with light, lockable, insulated, weather sealed uh, rear storage compartment. These latches here squeeze the door really tight. Insulated, weather seal right here. Diamond plating down. This is a large trunk on the 28 RBQ with a light here. Uh, the power cord, 25 foot power cord. That's a quick disconnect Marine Code cord, 30 amp. Airstream gives you a quick disconnect for a portable barbecue. This would be for a low pressure camping grill, so just make sure that uh, if you're going to use this, that it's a low pressure grill. A high pressure grill will not work with this, so you'd have to hook that directly up to one of your propane tanks. This is a port in the front of the trailer. When you get up there later, I'll show you where you hook this in. This is a manual override for your electric hitch jack. If that malfunction or your battery in the trailer died, there's a cap you take off the front. You can manually crank the trailer up and down. This is the tool to manually crank down your stabilizer jacks, but it's a three quarter inch socket here, so you can use a cordless drill too. The awning tool, this is what you'd use to operate your awning. I have many videos on how to operate the awning, so we're not gonna cover that in this walkthrough. And then the rest is everything Colonial gives you. Colonial gives you a winterization kit, so this is a siphon kit that you could hook up to your water pump and stick this into a jug of antifreeze for winterization. Colonial gives you a deluxe power cord adapter so we could adapt from 30 amp to 15 so you could plug the trailer in home for charging. You shouldn't be able to run an air conditioning unit off of this adapter. You should tr plug into true 30 amp. Colonial Airstream gives you toilet paper, gloves, drop-in deodorizer for your uh, black tank. You flush uh, one of these packets down the toilet for each tank load. Once you discharge that waste, drop in another one. 25-foot freshwater drinking hose and a premium waste hose. There's all different grades of waste hose. This is a very high quality one. It's got a clear elbow. It's got the donut and it's got the end here that you could screw into the uh, campground's connection. So you could detach the hose from this fitting, screw it in. There's three different sizes, but if their threads are stripped, you could slip the donut into their end and slip the hose into that and have a solid connection. And then if you take the end off, this whole piece will slide into your sore hose storage tube on the roadside of your trailer. Rear window awning. This piece velcros up. Pull down on it, swing the handles all the way around. And it rolls in by spring tension. Metal wrap so there's no latch to keep it shut. There's your wireless backup camera. Beautiful Airstream lettering here, raised lettering on the back. You can see the running lights up top as well. There's a 35 gallon black waste tank and a 37 gallon gray waste tank. Black tank is your toilet waste. On this trailer, the bathroom sink also dumps into your black tank. So any toothpaste you spit down the sink, it's gonna go in your black tank. It's probably where it belongs in the first place. Uh, you're gonna snap that waste hose on once you remove this cap. Put it into the campground's connection. There's a light out here so you can see at night. It's always good practice to empty your black tank first. These are blade valves, so they slide in and out. That will get all that toilet paper and toilet waste out. Might get some now in your waste hose. Well, once you're done, close the black tank, open the gray, and that will flush out your hose because that is your, sh uh, your kitchen sink and your shower waste. To take it a step further, after you empty your black tank, if you're going to put the trailer away in storage, there's a black tank flush. It's all the way up here. You could hook up a regular garden hose, not the nice white hose I gave you, just a regular garden hose up to this fitting. After the black tank is open, let that run for about five minutes and that wand inside the tank will get all that residual waste out of the tank and discharge it for you so you don't get tank odor. If you make a mistake and hook up a city water connection here, eventually you're going to wind up filling up your tank and flooding your trailer out or you'll have water shooting out of the vent in your trailer. So just make sure you know that this is the, the sore flusher, not your city water connection. If you want to hook the city water, well here's your connection right here. Take the little cap off, bring the white hose out, I uh, gave in the starter kit, screw it in, 
turn on the water at the campground, there's a water pressure regulator built in. So if you get an unexpected spike in water pressure, this will protect your trailer, about 55 PSI. This will not fill your freshwater tank. This is just supplying water to all your faucets on, de on demand. To fill the freshwater tank, you take out your 751 key, open the door, take the cap off, stick your hose in loose, turn the water pressure on low, and allow the tank, the 39 gallon tank, to fill. When it's done, a relief out of this air valve here, you'll see some water spitting out. And when you're all done and you want to drain the system down, so you're going to put the trailer back in storage, there's a drain valve between the axles here that you twist open, and that will allow the freshwater tank to gravity drain back out. It takes quite a bit of time to do so. Also back in here, there's some low point drains. So when you're following the winterization procedure, it's going to ask you to open up your low point drains. There's two right here behind the wheel. This vent right here is your refrigerator ventilation system. It allows fresh combustible air in, and there's an exhaust vent on the roof. Don't ever store things in this compartment. You can see they have insect screens on it, and it's gasketed nice and tight to stay shut. The power cord, uh, this is the shop cord. You'll get the beautiful cord in the back trunk there, nice and clean. Uh, screws right on. This collar will come undone. You twist and pull, and that will release your power cord. And then with the generator prep, if you get one air conditioner, you'll have another one of these connections at the front of the trailer. So if you had a generator just sitting in the bed of your pickup truck, you could plug it right from the truck into the trailer and uh, instead of bringing it all the way back here. There's a cable connection, so you can hook in cable or satellite, so you can hook the park cable at a campground. It is a cord that uh, you would need to purchase, about a 20-foot exterior grade cable. Satellite, if, there, if you wanted to use a satellite system, you'd buy a portable satellite dish, hook it in here, and then hook your satellite receiver inside the trailer uh, behind the TV or behind the Blu-ray player. You might need a HDMI switch box for that. Ut outside utility shower, same 751 key we're going to use. Open this up, take the wand, it hangs up here, you got hot and cold water to utilize. Make sure when you're winter winterizing the trailer that you do winterize this as well. A lot of people forget this and they forget to flush the toilet. Those are the two most common mistakes when people winterize the trailer. An expensive mistake would be forgetting to drain the water heater down for winterization. So this is the water heater. There's a drain plug that goes in right here. Uh, you don't want to forget to drain the water heater. Uh, when you turn on the water heater, which we were in the bathroom before, you could see the switches. What happens is the gas valve opens, allows gas to flow through, mix with combustible air, ignite right here, excess heat and exhaust comes out the top. There's a pressure relief valve built in that will, uh, in case the water right here gets to a too high of a pressure, instead of exploding, it will relief out here. Don't ever store things in here either. This is a combustible compartment, uh, so it could be dangerous. The furnace is located here, it was underneath the sink in the trailer. Uh, this is where the excess heat and exhaust will come out, so don't park next to any combustibles either when you have your furnace on. Underneath the trailer, we missed it, <clears throat> is the waste hose storage tube. This is where that waste hose will store when you're not using it. You don't want to throw it in your trunk or your back bumper. You want to try to get it where it belongs, separate from everything else. This is the cooktop ventilation I spoke about. Just pull the two latches down. When you turn the fan on, allow this to open up. And it's very important when it's in storage or when tow to put these latches on so the flap's not moving around. The side window awning, well, it goes all the way because it's, re it's shading your kitchen, your refrigerator, your shower and wardrobe, making the trailer a lot more efficient. When you're ready to roll it up, just unhook it, let it roll up, let go. And then there's a travel latch in the back you have to put on. So you could use your awning tool that was in the trunk or you could do it by hand. This is your VIN plate with your production information, VIN number, tire size, tire pressure. Uh, this is one location on the side of the battery box. There's an actual uh, riveted VIN plate as well. These are the stainless steel wrap protectors. It's on a hinge with three nuts. 
You can undo the nuts and swing them out to clean leaves and debris from behind. A lot of people are so curious about this hinge, it's, it's for maintenance. This is gapped from the body to allow debris to hit and deflect without denting the body behind. Because the gap's there, you could le get leaves and debris stuck behind it, so it's strictly for maintenance. This has a three-piece solar stone guards in the front. You can just pull these little tethers down, lift up, spin the neural knob, lock it in place. Now you can open your window from the inside, your three different heights, and it gains you access to a Phillips head screw top and bottom that you could turn a quarter turn. This will unhook and you can lift it off. And when you lift it off, you could clean leaves and debris out from behind here as well. But don't ever tow the trailer with these off. You don't want to break one of these curved safety glass windows. They're very expensive to repair. This is a generator pep prep port we spoke about earlier, 30 amp power connection. Aluminum bottle cover, which is removable so you could fill your propane tanks. There's two 30 pound bottles on board. That's about seven gallons a piece. You open it up. There's a wing nut here that clamps the bottle cover and the tanks down. Uh, these tanks should last you a whole entire season if you're for a normal camping experience. You can manually switch from left bottle to right bottle, or you could turn both bottles on and it will automatically switch over if they're both filled. Colonial Airstream fills both tanks when you purchase a trailer, so uh, that's all taken care of for you. The electric hitch jack is 12 volt. <laughs> raise and lower. Just make sure the motor stops before you reverse directions. This is where that tool goes in to manually crank it up and down. There's your light. There's a bubble level up top which gets you an idea if you're close to level. Colonial Airstream gives you a hitch coupler lock. It's a 2 and 5 16 inch ball. Once you undo your coupler lock you're gonna slide forwards and lift up. You can't lift up, it's got a lock on it, it's got to go forward and up. This is your trailer breakaway cable. This it would be attached to your vehicle in a very secure position. If the vehicle ever came detached from the trailer, it would pull this out, which will lock your brakes on the trailer, prevent the trailer from passing in the shoulder. Never, ever, ever pull this out and leave it out. You'll drain your batteries and burn your magnets out in your brakes. And um, you want to make sure you inspect this cable periodically to make sure it's not frayed. And it's good to replace these every five years. 11,500 pound safety chains, you, could, you have to crisscross them. If you want to take slack out, you just twist them. Just make sure you have enough room for the trailer to uh, turn. And when you're using a weight distribution kit, you want to make sure they clear that as well. Seven-way trailer connection, so you want to make sure your vehicle has a seven-way, and it's recommended that the vehicle also is equipped with a charge lead. You're going to need an electric brake controller in a vehicle. Some vehicles have them built in, some vehicles are pre-wired, some vehicles are not wired. So it is uh, something to know. Over here we have your propane quick disconnect port. You can turn the propane on and off here, and you can slip the hose in and pull the collar back and snap it in place. The batteries are in a lockable compartment because Colonial Airstream gives you, provides you with a lock for this uh, compartment. And because this has a solar charging system, this has absorbed glass mat battery upgrade. These are really, really good batteries. 12 volt, parallel, no caps to check, or check water levels or anything, maintenance free. And they're expensive, so that's why we lock them up. <clears throat> On this side of the trailer, we have your ZAMP quick, quick disconnect, which is standard. So if you have a portable solar panel right here, there's a spot you can plug that in. It's recommended to buy the ZAMP solar panels because their plug connection will fit right in. And then your spare tire, there's a little pin you pull out here. Come in a little bit closer here. We can see you slide the top pin across. And we can drop the tire down. Then I could raise the electric hitch jack up nice and high so I could gain access to it. Now that's the same size tire and rim, it's just a steel wheel instead of an aluminum wheel. And make sure that's in nice and secure. And don't forget to check your tire pressure in your spare tire. You don't want to have an unexpected tire failure and uh, your spare tire is flat as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video we did here today on the 28RBQ Flying Cloud. 
Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. I'll see you soon. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook. I'm Colonial Patrick. I'd love to hear from you. Telephone number at the store is 800-265-9019. And our website is colonialairstream.com. And check it out. We just redesigned it. Thank you.